Well, it's really nice outside these days. We're loving it. But this beautiful weather has kids getting out and about this time of year. And with more activity comes a greater chance of injury. So what are the most common types of injuries? How do you prevent those? Joining us this morning to tell us is Dr. Edward Shawofsky with Twin Cities Orthopedics. Thanks so much for being here. Good morning. I can see that you're very well prepared with all the protective gear here. But first, uh, can you start off by telling us a little bit about what you commonly see this type of year in, in terms of injuries? Well, as, as the children get more active and they're out particularly doing unsupervised activities, the most common injuries are to the forearm and wrist. Uh, the radius is the large bone in the forearm, and, and that's almost half of the uh, children's fractures that we see. And the second most common is fractures around the elbow. What kind of activities? Well, just about anything. Most of these injuries are called, caused by a fall on an outstretched hand. So mm -hmm. children falling off the swing set, that's correct. Landing they, like this? La land, landing too hard on the, on the outstretched hand. And children's bones are, are still relatively weak compared to adult bones, so they fracture rather readily. And of course, the younger children in particular are not as coordinated yet. So. And you brought us some protective gear that you're advising that kids use for what kind of activities, really, would you use this well, for? Well, first of all, you can't prevent all fractures. Kids are going to be active and they're going to fall down. But there are some high-risk activities, like rollerblading, for right. instance. And I, I highly recommend uh, wrist guards for, for kids who are out rollerblading. Mm. I tell parents, buy the protective gear first, and what you have left you can spend on the rollerblades. Mm -hmm. Also, elbow pads and, and knee the pads. The knee pads, they strap mm -hmm. on here. Right, correct. That's not bad at all. Correct. And the helmet, you know. Yes, e even even to the orthopedic doctor, the head comes first. We want to prevent those concussions. So. Okay, I mean, other than just wearing this protective gear, what other things do you advise to help keep your kids safe? Well, particularly with rollerblading, it's the surfaces that they're rollerblading on. You don't want your kids rollerblading where there's a lot of debris on, on the parking lot or on the, on the sidewalk. So uh, finding good, safe places to do their activities is probably the most important. At what point, if your child is injured, do you know it's serious enough that, hey, we need to go take this kid to the doctor? Well, first of all, if there's any deformity, obviously you're going to bring them in right away. Uh, the most common uh, sign of a fracture is pain that won't let up. A lot of people think that if the kid can move the fingers, if they can move the mm. hand, it's not broken. Mm. But that's not true. If they have pain that won't go away, there's a very chance, good chance they have a fracture. Okay. All right. Good warning. And are you a parent? I am a parent. I although, can tell. Although my children are a little past the rollerblading age. My youngest is 17 now. But uh, when my kids were small, they knew that if Dad caught them without their rollerblading, they're on, okay. the rollerblades got sold. All righty. Well, thanks so much. Good advice from a doctor and a dad. If you want to learn more about Twin Cities Orthopedics, go to our links page at ksdp.com. We've got this morning's headlines and your forecast ahead.